Next we're going to look at precision versus recall. We're going to think about the relationship between precision and recall in a similar way that we looked at the receiver operating characteristic. Now let's recall that uh, recall or sensitivity or the true positive rate is the true positives over the number of actual positives. The precision is the true positives over the true positives plus false positives. In other words, the true positives over the things that are actually labeled positive. And what we want to do is we want to show that we can write precision as a function of recall, where the recall will range from 0 to 1 and the precision will range from 0 to 1. To do so, we begin with no observations. So we begin with a recall of 0, uh, no observations as true positive. Then we progressively classify more until we get to a recall of 1. And at each step that we do that, we calculate the precision for that level of recall. And the result is we'll get precision as a function of recall. Another way to look at this is to take the precision, divide throughout by the number of actual positives, and that will actually give us the recall over the recall plus the false positives over the actual positives. So you can see that what's going to cause the precision to go down is going to be the false positives. So for example, if we had in our test set or validation set, we had some observation, then it goes into our classifier and it comes out as either positive or negative as a prediction. If we get a false positive, then that's going to cause the precision to decrease. Now we'll use the precision recall curve, PRC, on training, validation, or test data. But of course where it's most meaningful and where it should always be used ultimately is on the testing data. The idea would have, be to get a precision of one for as long as possible. So a precision recall curve looks like this as we call more and more of the test data. The precision is calculated and hopefully it stays up there close to one for as long as possible as we're recalling more and more of our data. So 1 comma 1 is the goal or the ideal or the target in a precision recall curve. We want to get as close to it as possible. Let's go back and look at extremely positive. The recall is 1. We've seen that already. The precision is the number of positives over the total. If we're extremely ideal, if everything was classified correctly, then we get 1, 1, which is the ideal point. If we're extremely negative, then everything is classified as negative. And in this case, the precision is indeterminate because we'd be dividing by 0. However, if we start with one true positive, then the recall is practically 0, if of course the capital P is relatively large. And the precision starts out at exactly 1. So the 0, 1 points often associated as the point corresponding to extremely negative. So here's what we have. We start out at 1 and the actual recall and precision we measure for our test set is going to be RS, some point out in the middle of space. And we're also going to have this ex other extreme corresponding to the blue where you have P over T. And then we construct the precision recall curve by connecting the points so that precision is a function of recall. Now what if we were extremely random? So if we classified with coin tosses, then the probability of heads Q would mean we'd have QP positives and QN negatives. And so therefore, the recall would be Q but the precision would be P over T. So we have a Q that could be anything between 0 and 1 and a random classifier would be something that relatively quickly dropped off down to the P over T. In particular, 
if you generalize this in a calculus sense, we would always have concave up. So we're hoping that our precision curve on average is concave down. It's getting as close as it can to the ideal point before bending down to the blue dot. There is a region under the PRC curve, the union of two trapezoids. The first has an area, the average length of the sides times the base, and then again for the second trapezoid. Expanding everything out, we notice that we're going to get some cancellation. And we end up with the areas r plus s over 2 plus p over 2t1 minus r. Now what's significant about this is that the area under the precision recall curve is especially significant when we have p much smaller than t, kind of the opposite case of the receiver operating characteristic. In particular, if p is much less than t, then we simply have an r plus s over 2, the average of the precision and recall. So that means that we can only get close to 1 if the actual precision and actual recall are both themselves approximately 1. There's also a thing called the F1 score, which we mentioned, and we'll talk about more later. But if we have the actual precision and recall, then the F1 score is the harmonic mean of the precision and recall. And the closer it gets to 1, the better. So now let's look at the car evaluation data. One thing about the car evaluation data was that there were very few cars labeled as very good. So we're going to look again. This is Rattle, and we're going to use Rattle to look at the metric, the evaluation of the decision tree for uh, the car evaluation data. So to start out, we're going to use another 80-20 split. Execute that. And now we're going to look at our model. And there's our tree. We executed and got the tree. There's the error matrix. And notice the accuracy is very high, but remember P here is much smaller than capital N. It is important that we're applying this to the testing data. There's our area under the curve. 0 0.996 is good, but again. Then we look here, and the area under the precision recall curve is also approximately 1. So what does all this mean? This means that we looked and saw that the receiver operating characteristic area under the curve was close to 1, the error was small, the accuracy was great, but what really clinched it for us was the fact that the precision was as good as it was. Finally, I want to mention that Rattle has almost everything we need to implement the predictive modeling approach. And let's go back because we've sort of finished an idea that we started uh, earlier. That the predictive modeling approach means that we have a set of big data. We explore it. So we might find the answer just by looking at it. We have to do some pre-processing. So we may want to transform the data. Or we may want to normalize the data. Then we have our data mining allegory. We have algorithms that we use to mine information from the big data set. And afterwards, we must assess the results. Here's the actual tab bar from Rattle. And it has this same idea. We load the data. We explore it. We transform it, which is the pre-processing. We have algorithms, which are the models. And then we evaluate it using the metrics. There are some other tabs here also. I'll just mention a couple. The test is basic statistics, and clustering is another type of predictive modeling. So in summary, metrics complete the predictive modeling paradigm. So we've now finished off this initial thought that given a big data set, we want to explore it, look at some basic statistics, 
lose some visualizations, maybe look at a network model. We want to do any pre-processing that may have to be done. For example, we may have to impute missing values. We've seen that uh, a couple of occasions and done an assignment related to that. In addition, we may need to rescale, recenter, so on and so forth. We apply algorithms. The two algorithms we know right now are the K nearest neighbors and the decision trees, but there are more to come. We assess the results with metrics. We look at training and validation and test sets. And right now we have these metrics. But that's essentially what the course is about. What the rest of the course is going to do is look at the algorithms beyond K nearest neighbors and decision trees. And so we now know kind of the basic idea. We know how to implement it with Rattle or using Python. Now we're going to see how to make it better. Decision trees are great, K nearest neighbors is very powerful, but the algorithms to come are that much better even still.